Hi, Cesar in here. Just wanted to make a quick guide on an item called Abrad's Hooves. And um, we'll have some background footage of me playing this in the background as well. I've leveled an Elementalist and a Scion so far with this thing. And uh, the way it works is every time you do a footstep, then Abrad's Fury will like explode. And um, it'll do fire damage around where, where your character is walking. So for example, if I just throw these on my ranger right now, you can see that there is... Uh... Actually, you can't really see it. Maybe the MTX overwrites it. But uh, you'll, you'll see it in the background. <laughs> but the way they work is generally you want to have as much flat damage as possible on the boots. Um, so normally what I start off with, uh, socketed, and like... The, the gems you put in will go on the actual uh, Abra's Fury. So I usually start off with added lightning, added cold, uh, combustion, and onslaught. At some point later, I think around level 30, 32, uh, 31, uh, for Ice Bite, I'll switch in Ice Bite with onslaught and use an onslaught jewel or a flask instead, so you can get onslaught on a searching or a murderous jewel. Um, Control destruction I put in instead of combustion at level 18. So this this is like what I use. And this is this is uh, not so much an end game build, it's just a great way to level particularly elementalists. Is by far the best to level with it. I did it on Scion as well, that's okay. And um, Inquisitor as well, I guess, would work fairly well. So ascendancy wise, the only thing that really helps a lot is the elementalist prolif ascendancy. And uh, Scion is pretty good for leveling it too, and the Elementalist there is nice, but again, like the Elementalist Prolif is the best Ascendancy if you really want to make an impact on them. Again, not an endgame thing, it's mostly for leveling new characters. Um, early on, I'll usually use three Grand Spectrums pretty early. These are really good. Hypnotic Eyes with like, no wielding damage in a Darkness and Throne. I used that for pretty much leveling any character. Uh, as soon as I hit level 10, I put on two Axiom Perpetuums. You can replace them as you go fairly easily by using, for example, uh, until I think Wailing's level 35 or 40, but uh, you can use the, for example, Torment ones, Muttering and Weeping, as you go. That's why I don't level them up, so in case I want to level something new, you can use that. So flat added to spells is like the most important thing. Later on, this is what I replace it with, level 50, and then I usually stop playing this around level 70 anyway. This is just like a leveling thing for me. Sacrificial Heart is pretty big. It, well, as you can see, it just grants so much damage. Um, early Rings is just any ring. Coral would be better, because obviously you don't benefit from the Flat Fizz. So buy a level 2 or 3 item level Coral Ring, and uh, you can just Alki and then craft the flat added, uh, what's it called? Show it here. It's just that one. It's actually item level one. And this is also great for leveling any character. It's global damage, so allowed to attack spells and even heralds. Uh, so you make your heralds pretty crazy early on. And then you have uh, the barracks rings. Any, any of the barracks rings will work. Grip is like the second most expensive. And uh, this one has life on it. You do actually have very little life. Very little life on the build, so I do prefer the grip. It gives you leech too, but generally you won't notice the leech. You also don't need mana. I usually use Herald of Ash, Ice, and Thunder, and that's usually what I end up using for the entire time. You can do Anger as well, but I do prefer the Heralds. They do get quite a lot of damage with all the flat added global damage that you're adding. Um, the glove here is really important, so there's a couple of things you can do to make gloves like these. If you use either a Scorched, a metallic or a frigid that will add one of the damage rolls like for example add fire damage however what i usually do is use either metallic with a scorched or a frigid uh, and then a uh, prismatic so remember you can't use scorched and frigid in the same one because they have no fire no cold mods but yeah uh, if you use scorched metallic and prismatic you have a chance of getting it i think you can get a triple but at least very likely to get a double. Ideally you want to have like an open prefix so you can craft life once you hit level 16 or something, but you can craft life as you go. And uh, these are also something that's very good for leveling anything. Uh, important things is you want to have face run with increased duration at some point. 
And the skill tree and stuff is just, you know, pick up elemental AoE nodes. This is more like for leveling other things. And then you just, you just slam, slam down a bunch of these once you're done leveling. So it's again, it's more of like a expensive, fancy leveling way, but it can be pretty fast, especially if you're not a speedrunner. This is like one of the faster ways to level. Make sure to use Deco Totem while leveling. And something I also normally do is I have a tabula with either plus one gems or plus two like AOE gems that you could use with Flame Surge. So if I have a plus one tabula, I use a level one, two, and then later a three in power if I have them lying around for the Flame Surge. Or just Flame Surge and a plus two tabula is really big by itself as well. The way you would do this for a boss is you would throw up a decoy, flame dash through the boss, and just slap it once or twice and it's dead. It does crazy amounts of damage. And that is part of the reason that I started using Flame Surge to kill bosses like Shaper. Because it just, yeah. It actually destroys because it gets like 80% more damage if the target is burning. Uh, so on Flame Surge, I would do uh, Flame Surge, faster casting, but as soon as you get Spell Echo, replace it with that. Um, and then early on, you know, just like added lining, added cold that you can replace later. You want to use elemental focus on Flame Surge because you can't, um, ignite or anything with that anyway. You can shock, but it doesn't really matter. Um, control destruction and fire penetration and conch effect. It's not something you're going to be using for clearing, so it's fine to use conch. And yeah, it is crazy, crazy amounts of damage. Uh, it's very important that the target is burning. So just want to level with this and uh, again, Elementalist is the main one that it's good for. If you want, balancing your resist for Wise Oak can be really good. So the way this works, if you don't know, is it goes on your like overcapped resist. So for example, if I used a Wise Oak on this character, I would deal additional fire damage and take less uh, cold. If they were all 91 or all 156, I would penetrate on all of them and take less. So it is a very powerful flask if you balance it. Uh, phasing, force flask can be really good as well for leveling. Uh, doesn't really matter that much once you get phase run with ink duration, because then you can just throw it down and your ice bite will give you extra frenzy charges to make it last longer. Another thing that's really strong for the build is Elemental Overload. You sacrifice all your crit multiplier and you get a 40% uh, more multiplier instead. You're going to be proccing this just by walking. So you don't... You can do Orb Restorance with Ink Crit Strikes as well. And uh, you can just respec out of this later if you're a crit build. So regardless if you're helping Alira or killing the bandits for all the skill points, would recommend that for leveling. It works really well with the Prismatic Eclipses and stuff like that. So will help a lot with damage. You can take things like the Firewalker, AoE nodes will help, and Holy Dominion as well. So this pretty much sums up all I can think about Abrats. It's not really viable endgame. I've done it once or twice, but the Prolip and stuff, it's generally not enough. You can maybe try with like making the Herald of Ash clear and be really big, but other than that, I can't think of a way to really make it work endgame. Um, in the current patch anyway. If AoE gets buffed again, then maybe. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy, and as you can see in the background, it is pretty fun to play. And yeah, it really takes you through the story fast. If you have any questions, jump by twitch.tv, Scissorin. And thanks for watching. Try to die less than I do.